What's up guys, this is Demkeys and welcome to the Unity Particle Effects series. In this series, I'll be teaching you how to make different types of particle effects using Unity's particle system. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to create a simple cartoon style bonfire effect. I've already done a tutorial on the basics of Unity's particle system. So if you want to check out that tutorial, the link's going to be in the top right corner and in the description down below. Real quick, I want to mention that I had done that tutorial a while back. So back then, certain modules like the noise module and the lights module weren't part of the particle system so those modules have not been covered but all the other modules have been covered in that tutorial that being said let's begin we're going to start by changing the layout most of you are probably going to have this default layout to change the layout click on this drop down in the top right corner and select tall you're probably not going to have as long a list as i do these are custom layouts that i've made but you'll definitely have the tall option this is a preset that comes with the editor create a new scene right click in the hierarchy click particle system this is going to create a particle system game object rename the particle system to bonfire particle system next with the bonfire particle system selected expand the shape module and the shape is currently set to cone we're going to leave it at that but we're going to change the angle to zero because we want a cylindrical shape rather than a conical shape so now as you can see the particles are going straight up also change the radius from one to two so the cone is now a little more wide you can collapse the shape module now and expand the emission module in the emission module change the rate over time to 200 by default it might be 10 and you can collapse it after that now you'll notice these particles are lasting very long this is because of their lifetime the start lifetime is currently set to 5 we want to take it down to 2 notice as you take the number down the particles start dying out much faster. This is exactly what the start lifetime does. So set the start lifetime to two, that should be enough. Next, we wanna set the start size. The start size is currently set to one, which is a constant. We wanna set it to a random between two constants. So click on this arrow over here and select random between two constants. The max value should be four and the minimum value should be one. So the start size will be anywhere between these two numbers. These are two float numbers. So the start size could be, for example, 1.7 or 2.6 and so on. Next, enable the color over lifetime module by clicking on the circle next to it and expand it and click on this color box. So this is the gradient editor. We are going to create a gradient for our particles. These keys at the top control the alpha and the keys at the bottom control the color. So select this key at the bottom and we're gonna set the color to a very dark orange, not red, but a very dark orange. Next, we are gonna add another key just click here to add another key and we're going to set the color for that key to something lighter than the color that we just set so something like this next add another key and we're going to set the color for that key to something lighter than the previous color and the very last key we're going to set its color to a dark orange next add an alpha key up here and we are not going to change the value of this key but we're going to change the value of the last alpha key to zero so what's going to happen is the alpha is going to remain constant from this point to this point but then from this point up to this point it gradually goes down to zero and so that basically makes it look like the particle is disappearing so we are done with our gradient for color over lifetime all right now real quick i want to mention this you don't need to set the gradient every single time you create the particle system so for example the next time you want to create the bonfire particle system you don't need to set this gradient again you can just create a preset out of this gradient right now by clicking on this new button so that's going to create this preset right here and then the next time when you want to create a bonfire particle system you can just select this preset and your gradient is ready all right next enable the size over lifetime module this module is going to help us control the size of a particle over its lifetime leave separate axes unchecked and click on this gray box to enable the size curve. Once you enable the curve, you'll be able to see the curve over here. You'll also notice two keys have been added by default in the curve. Select the last key and drag it down to zero, basically down to this lower right corner. So what's gonna happen is the particle is gonna start out at its full size and gradually reduce in size until the size becomes zero. And as you can see, that is happening over here. Now, this number right here, one, this is not the size of the particle. Article, this is a multiplier so as you already know the start size can be anywhere between 1 and 4 so let's say the start size is 2.5 that number is going to be multiplied by 1 so uh, don't misunderstand this 
to be the size. This is just a multiplier. All right, so our particle system is already starting to look a little bit like fire. Next, we want to add a little bit of disturbance to the particle movement. To do that, enable the noise module. The noise module is basically going to add noise or turbulence to the particle movement. Using these properties, you can control the kind of noise that is generated. And this right here is a preview of the noise being generated. The only two properties that we are going to change are strength, which controls what the overall effect of the noise is. Uh, we're going to set it to 1.4. And you can already see some difference compared to before. Uh, just real quick, I want to apologize if the frame rate is bad right now because I'm doing a screen recording and running this particle system, so the frame rate is not going to be that great. So yeah, moving on, the only two properties we want to change over here are strength and scroll speed. When you change the scroll speed, you'll notice a little more random movement as compared to when the scroll speed was zero. And as I mentioned earlier, you can see what the noise looks like over here. All right, so this is starting to look like fire now. One last thing that we need to do is check pre-warm. Let me explain what this does. I'm going to click stop over here and click simulate. When I do this, you'll notice that the particle system starts from the very beginning. If I check pre-warm, the particle system is going to behave as if it has already emitted one loop cycle. As a result, when I click simulate, it looks as if the particle system has already been running. It doesn't start from the very beginning. All right, so the bonfire particle system is ready. Next, we need to create the smoke particle system. Right click on the bonfire particle system and click particle yeah. system. This is gonna create a particle system within the bonfire particle system and move it a little bit on the Y axis. That much is enough. Okay, now before we continue, I wanna show you a small glitch. It's not exactly a glitch, but notice when I look at this from different camera angles, sometimes the white particles appear in the front and sometimes the bonfire particles appear in the front. To fix this, we need to set a sorting layer for both of these particle systems. So let's do that. Click on the bonfire particle system and under the renderer module, change the sorting layer. Before changing the sorting layer, we have to add a sorting layer. We can use the default sorting layer, but I want to add a new sorting layer. So click add sorting layer, click plus over here and call this sorting layer bonfire particle. Then go back to the bonfire particle system and under the renderer module, set the sorting layer to bonfire particle. Now I want you to pay attention to the order in layer. It is set to zero. Then select our child particle system and set the sorting layer to bonfire particle, but change the order in layer to negative one because we want this particle system to always be rendered behind the bonfire particle system. Also real quick, I forgot to do this. Rename this particle system to smoke particle system. All right. Now, in the final product, we want the smoke to be rendered behind the fire. But for now, since we are designing this particle system, we want it to be rendered in front. So change the order in layer to one. We'll come back and change this a little bit later. All right. So first of all, just like we did with the bonfire particle system, we want to check pre-warm on this so that we don't have to wait for the smoke to generate. It's already there. But that is your preference. If you prefer for it to start from the beginning, then no need to check pre-warm. Next, under the shape module, set the angle to zero, change the radius to two, and under the emission module, change the rate over time to 200. Next, we need to change the start lifetime. Now, the start lifetime in this case is gonna be a random between two constants. Those two constants are gonna be, let's say four and two. Next, we need to change the start size. So we're gonna set that to a random between two constants as well. In this case, it's gonna be, let's say three and five. So they're nice thick particles. Then enable the color over lifetime module. And we're gonna set the gradient for the particles in this particle system. You already know the difference between the top keys and the bottom keys, so I'm not gonna explain that again. Set the color for the very first key to not black, but a very dark gray. Then add another key and set the color for this key to something a little lighter than the previous color. Then add another key and set the color for this to something a little darker than the previous color. And the final color has to be something dark. Also add the alpha key over here and the last alpha key set its value to zero. So now we have what looks like smoke. The reason I set this last key to a very dark color is because if I would have set this to white, this is what it would look like. And of course, I've already mentioned this, but I'm gonna mention it again. You can set this as a preset, so you don't need to create this gradient again next time. Next, we wanna enable size over lifetime, enable the curve, but in this case, 
add a key in the middle of the curve. You don't have to be very precise, just somewhere in the middle. Double click and that's gonna add a key and then select the last key and drag it down all the way to zero. So basically what this is gonna do is, it's gonna make sure that the size of each particle remains constant up to half of its lifetime. And once half the lifetime has passed, then the particle will start to gradually reduce in size. Finally, we need to enable the noise module, but before that, let's change the order in layer back to negative one. So now the smoke is being rendered behind the bonfire. And now enable the noise module. So as you can see, once you enable the noise module, you can see a lot of disturbance in the particles movement. Now I wanna mention this real quick. Don't try and copy what I'm doing. Don't try and copy the steps that I'm showing you. Try and understand the steps that I'm showing you. Try and understand why I'm enabling each module and why I'm setting the values that I'm setting. Because only then you'll be able to customize the particle system to your liking. And speaking of values, these values that you see me setting, these aren't fixed values. You can set your own values according to your preference. If you feel that the particle system doesn't look the way you want it to look, go ahead and change the values, experiment with different values and see what works for you. It's all about your preference because you are designing this particle system. All right, so moving on, we don't need to make a lot of changes in the noise module for the smoke particle system. At most, I'm just gonna change the scroll speed from zero to 0 0.2. Also go back to the shape module and notice how this shape is currently cylindrical. We want this to be a little bit conical, not too much, but a little bit. So we're gonna change the angle from zero to five. So now the smoke looks a little more spread out. You can collapse the shape module so that it's not obstructing our view. And with that, our bonfire particle system is ready. Now, as I mentioned earlier, don't try and copy the steps that I'm showing you. Try and understand these steps. Because once you understand why each module is being enabled, then you'll be able to customize it to your liking. And again, as I mentioned before, the values that you see me setting over here, they aren't fixed values. You can set it to whatever you want. For example, if you want the smoke to be a little taller, if you want it to last a little longer, you can set the start lifetime between two and five. So now the smoke looks a little more tall. If you want the smoke to be a little more thick, you can increase the rate over time. You can also increase the start size and so on. Customize the particle system to your preference. Also, I wanna show this real quick before leaving. Disable the smoke particle system. And let's say you are designing some sort of blue flame. You wanna design a blue flame for some sort of fantasy world. You can change the color scheme in color over lifetime to something like this. And I've already showed you how to create the gradient, so I'm not gonna go over those steps. You can see these color key values and make it by yourself. But yeah, I just wanted to uh, show this as well to show you that it is possible. So yeah, that's it. This is how you make a simple cartoon style bonfire particle system. All right, I hope this video was helpful. If you'd like to check out more videos, head over to my channel. There should be two videos up on the screen right now as well. Also on the screen, you'll find links to my main channel and my music channel, go check them out. If you'd like to help me out with a donation, my PayPal email address is mentioned up on the screen and in the description down below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Leave your comments below and I'll see you guys next time.